Welcome to part 6 of Kinetics Review. This video will focus on mechanisms given a previously experimentally determined rate law for a reaction. Before we begin, it is worth mentioning that the student should have first viewed videos 1 through 5 of this review to ascertain how a rate law is experimentally determined. Arguably, the most important reason to study kinetics is so a reaction mechanism can be hypothesized from an experimentally determined rate law, which is usually determined one of two ways, via the method of initial rates or the gathering of concentration time data. Thus, to exploit or harness a reaction, in other words, speed it up or slow it down, the experimentalist needs the hypothesized mechanism. Interestingly, a mechanism can only be disproved and never proven. Given an experimentally determined rate law for a reaction, we need to hypothesize a mechanism. A proposed mechanism is nothing more than a hypothesized single or multi-step reaction sequence that attempts to explain the order of events within a reaction. Each step of the hypothesized mechanism is called an elementary step. During these elementary steps, Intermediates may be formed, but then they are consumed in later steps of the mechanism. Also, the slowest step within the proposed mechanism is the rate determining step, or simply the RDS, which determines how quickly reactants can become products and usually has the highest activation energy and or the smaller rate constant. Think of the RDS as the bottleneck of the reaction sequence, which is analogous to the narrowest point of the hourglass. Two criteria must be met for a hypothesized mechanism. First, the elementary steps must add up and match the overall balanced equation. Second, the molecularity of the rate determining step must match the experimentally determined rate law. With just these basics, let's examine some proposed mechanisms. In the first example reaction, we are given a previously experimentally determined rate law. A mechanism has been hypothesized and we are asked if this mechanism is plausible. Simply stated, we have to determine if this hypothesized mechanism meets both criteria. Let's check to see if the sum of both elementary reactions equal the final balance reaction. Canceling the intermediate, HI, before adding the proposed elementary reactions affords the final reaction, which does match the stoichiometry of the given reaction. Now let's check the molecularity of the RDS and see if it matches the experimentally determined rate law. The rate constant for step 1 is much less than the rate constant for step 2. Thus, step 1 is the RDS. Notice that the molecularity of step 1 matches the experimentally determined order for each reactant, which is first order with respect to H2 and first order with respect to ICL. Thus, this hypothesized mechanism may be correct. For further clarification, it may help the beginning student to think of the molecularity of the RDS as the number of reactants or intermediates that must collide in that step to afford products, which loosely translates to the stoichiometry of the RDS, which must match the order for each reactant in the experimentally determined rate law. In the next example reaction, we are given a previously experimentally determined rate law. A mechanism has been hypothesized, and we are asked if this mechanism is plausible. Again, simply stated, we have to determine if this hypothesized mechanism meets both criteria. So let's check to see if the sum of both elementary reactions equal the final balance reaction. Canceling the intermediate, the fluoride radical, before adding the proposed elementary reactions, affords the final reaction, which does match the stoichiometry of the given reaction. Now let's check the molecularity of the RDS and see if it matches the experimentally determined rate law. The rate constant for step 1 is much less than the rate constant for step 2. Thus, step 1 is the RDS. Notice that the molecularity of step 1 matches the experimentally determined order for each reactant which is first order with respect to NO2 and first order with respect to F2. Thus, this hypothesized mechanism may be correct. 
In this example reaction, we are given a previously experimentally determined rate law. A mechanism has been hypothesized, and we are asked if this mechanism is plausible. Again, simply stated, we have to determine if this hypothesized mechanism meets both criteria. So let's check to see if the sum of both elementary reactions equal the final balance reaction. First, cancel the intermediate, NOCl2, before adding the proposed elementary reactions. And after adding, the sum does match the stoichiometry of the given reaction. Now let's check the molecularity of the RDS and see if it matches the experimentally determined rate law. The rate constant for step 1 is much greater than the rate constant for step 2, thus step 2 is the RDS. Now we write the rate law examining the molecularity of the RDS, which is first order with respect to NOCl2 and first order with respect to NO. The rate law written with the aid of the molecularity of the RDS appears not to equal the experimentally derived rate law. For example, the orders are different for NO and NOCl2 does not appear in the experimentally determined rate law. In fact, NOCl2 is an intermediate, and as it is formed in step 1, it is consumed in step 2. Intermediates are neither a reactant nor a product and cannot be included within a rate law. Thus, let's look to step 1 in our proposed mechanism and write an equilibrium expression, the law of mass action, and rearrange it for the intermediate NOCl2. Now, substitute for the intermediate within the rate law that was written with the molecularity of the RDS. After substitution, the rate law is simplified. For example, NO becomes second order, and the product of the two constants is simply a new constant. Now the molecularity of the RDS matches the experimentally determined rate law, which was given for this exercise. With both criteria being met, the proposed mechanism may be correct. In the next example reaction, we are again given a previously experimentally determined rate law. The reaction is believed to follow a two-step mechanism, and we are asked if this mechanism is plausible. Again, we have to determine if the hypothesized mechanism meets both criteria. Let's check to see if the sum of both elementary reactions equal the final balance reaction. Canceling the intermediate, the NO3 intermediate, and the extra mole of NO2 before adding the proposed elementary reactions affords the final reaction which matches the stoichiometry of the given reaction. Now let's check the molecularity of the RDS and see if it matches the experimentally determined rate law. The rate constant for step 1 is much less than the rate constant for step 2, thus step 1 is the RDS. Notice that the molecularity of step 1 matches the experimentally determined order, which is second order with respect to NO2. Thus, this hypothesized mechanism may be correct. Now that we are comfortable with evaluating proposed mechanisms, it is worth our efforts to look deeper at the relationship between the final balanced equation, the experimentally determined rate law, and the proposed mechanism with an RDS, which were explored in the previous example. The beginning chemistry student may look at this reaction and believe that a mole of CO collides with a mole of NO2 to afford a transition state or activated complex that will allow an oxygen atom to be transferred from NO2 to CO yielding the products NO and CO2, which seems very reasonable. If this were the case, the reaction would be a one-step bimolecular reaction with first-order dependence for CO and first-order dependence for NO2. However, a kinetic study has yielded a rate law which states that the rate determining step for this reaction is second order with respect to NO2, and CO is zero order and therefore does not even appear in the rate law. Thus, two moles of NO2 must collide first to afford an activated complex, which will yield the intermediate NO3 and the product NO after the transfer of an oxygen atom. The intermediate NO3 
then reacts quickly with a mole of CO so that an atom of oxygen is transferred and the product CO2 is formed as well as a mole of NO2. Clearly, the two-step hypothesized mechanism, with the rate determining step being two moles of NO2 reacting, which originates from the kinetic study, is not at all obvious when simply examining the balanced equation for this reaction, which may mislead the beginning student to simply think one mole of CO collides with one mole of NO2 to yield products. This example reaction helps to underscore the importance of kinetic studies that allow a rate law to be experimentally determined first so insights into possible mechanisms may be hypothesized. Perhaps at this point it is worth our efforts to look back at a previous example between NO2 and F2 to further stress the importance of first obtaining an experimentally determined rate law prior to hypothesizing a mechanism. Thus, let's also recall the experimentally determined rate law and the proposed mechanism that met both criteria which was explored in a previous example. The beginning chemistry student may look at this reaction and believe that two NO2 collide with one F2 to afford a transition state or activated complex that will allow fluorine atoms to be transferred to both NO2s, yielding two NO2Fs. Although a term molecular reaction is rare, this still seems like a reasonable assumption for the beginning student. If this were the case, the reaction would be a one-step term molecular reaction with second-order dependence for NO2 and first-order dependence for F2. However, a kinetic study has yielded a rate law which states that the rate determining step for this reaction is first order with respect to NO2 and first order with respect to F2. Thus, NO2 must collide with F2 to afford an activated complex, which will yield the product NO2F and the intermediate fluoride radical. The intermediate fluoride radical with only seven electrons, then reacts quickly with NO2 so that an additional NO2F is formed. Clearly, the two-step hypothesized mechanism, with the rate determining step being NO2 reacting with fluorine, which originates from the kinetic study, is not at all obvious when simply examining the balanced equation for this reaction, which may mislead the beginning student to simply think two moles of NO2 collide with one mole of F2 to yield products. Again, this example reaction helps to underscore the importance of kinetic studies that allow a rate law to be experimentally determined first so insights into possible mechanisms may be hypothesized. Thus far, we have been asked to prove if the proposed mechanism meets the two criteria for a hypothesized mechanism, given a balanced reaction and an experimentally derived rate law. But what if we had to propose our own mechanism, given the balanced equation and experimentally determined rate law? In this example, the experimentally determined rate law indicates the RDS must be first order with respect to A and first order with respect to B. Thus, let's write our first step as the RDS with the same molecularity as the rate law. For the product formed, if I write I for intermediate, then in the second elementary step, I reacts with another A to form product C. Now the intermediates will cancel, and the sum matches the final balanced equation. The proposed mechanism does meet both criteria. In the next example, the experimentally determined rate law indicates the RDS must be second order with respect to A. Thus, let's write our first step as the RDS with the same molecularity as the rate law, which is A plus A, or simply 2A. For the products formed, if I write B and C, then this reaction is a one-step reaction, which satisfies both criteria for a proposed mechanism. Alternatively, if I propose a more thorough mechanism, where the first step is still the RDS that matches the experimentally determined rate law, 
A plus A, but in the proposed mechanism, A plus A forms an intermediate, an intermediate that can be detected. Then this mechanism may be a better way to think of this reaction. Then in the second step, the intermediate could decompose to form B and C, which is very similar to the initial one-step proposed mechanism. Canceling the intermediate before adding both elementary steps, the sum is equal to the final balanced equation. As demonstrated, more than one mechanism may be hypothesized. In the next example, this balanced reaction is equal to the reaction above. However, the experimentally determined rate law is different. The rate law indicates first order with respect to B. Thus, let's write the molecularity of the RDS in step 1 as simply B to I prime, an intermediate. Then in step 2, the intermediate may react with A to yield a different intermediate, I double prime. At this point, I double prime may react with A to yield product C. Canceling all the intermediates and summing the three elementary steps gives the final balanced equation, which matches the given equation. Alternatively, the first step could be the same so that the RDS matches the experimentally determined rate law. However, then 2A could react with the intermediate in the next step to afford product C. Canceling the intermediate and adding the elementary reactions affords the final balanced equation, which matches the given equation. It is worth mentioning that the second step has a three-body collision between I and two A's, which do exist but are rare. In our final reaction, the experimentally determined rate law indicates the RDS must be first order with respect to A and first order with respect to B. Thus, let's write our first step as the RDS with the same molecularity as the rate law, and let's assume an intermediate and product C are formed. Then in the second elementary step, the intermediate will react with another A to form product D, which makes sense because now the intermediates will cancel and the sum is equal to the final balanced equation. This proposed mechanism does meet both criteria and very well may be the correct mechanism.